In this video, I'm going to discuss the advantages and drawbacks of hard disk drives and solid state drives, and in particular, how to answer an exam style question on this topic. Before you can do that, let's just look at the basics of how these devices actually work, because that will help you to understand which devices are most appropriate for different situations. We have our traditional hard disk drives. They are, of course, magnetic storage. It's a mechanical device with moving parts. It consists of spinning magnetic disk platters with actuator arms that swing across the disk surfaces. Those actuator arms have a read-write head at the end, and they're able to deposit or to read very small magnetic charges on the disk surface. That represents the binary data. Magnetic hard disk drives are non-volatile. That means that when the power is removed, the data will be safe, which is important because they are secondary storage devices for your long-term storage. If we look at solid state drives, they're not mechanical. There's no moving parts in those at all. They consist of integrated circuits using NAND flash memory technology. They are non-volatile as well. If you remove the power, the data will remain. And of course, they're still secondary storage. Before we look at the pros and cons in more detail, it's probably important to take a quick look at how a magnetic hard disk drive actually works in practice. On this crude diagram, you can see I've drawn tracks and sectors on the disk surface. I've also labelled in yellow the actuator arm, and you can see the zone in between the two yellow stars where the arm swings across to read the data or to leave data on the disk surface. Although a hard drive disk spins incredibly fast, accessing data is not instant. There is still a delay waiting for that disk to spin round to the appropriate place where your data is saved. And although the actuator arm swings across the disk surface incredibly fast, there is still a delay waiting for the arm to swing across to the track where your data is saved. Although small delays add up over time, particularly depending on how your data is saved. In the diagram in front of you, if you look at the green circles, that could represent a data file. You can see it's on a single track. Once we've got the actuator arm moved across the disk surface to the right location, we can access that data pretty quickly as the disk spins around. It's all in one place. However, if your data is fragmented and split across several sectors of the surface on several tracks, then it's going to be more problematic for your hard drive to gather up that data and you might have to wait for the disk to spin around several times and the arm to move across. Again, it's fast, but those delays do add up over time. So let's look at solid state drives. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages. Solid state drives are more robust than a normal hard drive. That means if you tap them, drop them, they're less likely to break. Solid state drives are faster in speed than hard disk drives. They use less power. They generally generate less heat. They're lighter in weight. Often a much smaller form factor, so physically smaller in size in your device, and generally quieter as well. The disadvantages of solid state drives is they are more expensive per gigabyte, and make sure on exam you, you quantify that. Don't just say more expensive, but more expensive per unit of storage or more expensive per gigabyte. And there's a limited number of write cycles. That means there is a theoretical limit on how many times you can keep saving data to a solid state drive. There's no limit to how many times you can read data from them, but resaving data over again, there is a limit you can reach on that. If we look at hard disk drives, magnetic hard disk drives, the advantages are per gigabyte or per unit of storage, they are cheaper than solid state. That means manufacturers are making them available in large uh, variety of big capacities. And as we said, there's no limit to the write cycles. As long as that hard drive is working, you can save and resave and load as many times as you want. The downsides though, they're not as robust. 
Okay, that means if you were to drop a device with a hard drive inside, there is a chance, being mechanical, that that hard drive could be permanently damaged and you can't get to the data. But not as fast in accessing the data because we're relying on moving parts. A solid state drive can access that data instantly, no matter where it's saved on those chips. But with a hard drive, we're waiting for that disk to spin round and the arm to move across. That's going to take time. So it's not as fast. And also, if it's been dormant, it may take a short while for that hard drive to get up to full speed. Okay, so now let's focus on how you can apply this knowledge in your exam if a question on these devices were to come up. Simply recalling facts isn't always going to be enough to get you full marks, especially if it's an extended question on this topic. You need to be able to relate your knowledge to a particular scenario the exam board may give you and apply what you've learned to that scenario. So here's a couple of examples to uh, illustrate what I mean by that. Let's say in your exam you've been given a question about how a storage device should be used in a video camera drone. There'll be a paragraph or so outlining a little story, a backstory, a scenario about somebody who wants to um, buy a drone and take it out to do, let's say, 4K video footage or whatever it might be. And they want you to recommend what type of storage device they should fit to their drone or should be used when you manufacture a drone. So understanding the benefits and drawbacks of different devices, in your mind you're probably thinking, well, okay, the drone needs to be robust, it's going to get bashed about in flight, the drone needs to be low power, so the battery lasts longer, it needs to be lightweight, shouldn't overheat. These are all the benefits of a solid state drive. The only downside, if you have to evaluate this, I suppose, is if it's a 4K drone, how much footage can you fit on a solid state drive? But on balance, um, a solid state drive is by far the better option here for a drone. There's lots of benefits and those benefits are needed in a drone for it to be a good product. The problem is you need to make sure that you're very um, explicit in your answer and you relate your answer back to the scenario of the drone. Giving generic answers about what's good about SSDs isn't going to get you any marks if the question is about a scenario. The question's about a drone. Your answers need to be tied back to the question on the drone. For example, you could say, I would recommend an SSD for the drone because drones are battery powered, SSDs require less power than HDDs and will therefore allow the drone to fly for longer before it needs to be recharged. So you can't just say SSDs use less power, it's got to be SSDs use less power and this is important because drones are battery powered and nobody wants a drone that lasts two minutes and the battery runs out. Or, for example, by their nature, drones may get knocked about or crashed uh, whilst in flight. SSDs are more robust than HDDs, therefore could withstand the crashes or damage. In other words, you can't just say in your exam paper, I recommend SSD because it's more robust. You would need to say, it's more robust and this is obviously very important in a drone because a drone, in the course of its life, is likely to crash land, get bashed about, get knocked. You can't just say, SSDs are more robust. That is not a full answer. They've given you a scenario. They expect you to relate your answer back to the scenario, back to the story. You could say SSDs are generally more lightweight than HDDs. A lighter drone is easier to fly, requires less power. In other words, who cares if it's light? Well, we want your drone to be lightweight, more agile, uh, less power to fly. Let's look at another example. You may have some sort of backstory, a paragraph discussing how a shop has um, CCTV or wants CCTV installed and it's looking for a recommendation of a storage device it should install into its security cameras. And it may say, for example, the shop or the premises has you know, at least seven security cameras. So straight away you're thinking, okay, seven cameras, that's quite a lot of footage to capture if they're recording all day and all night. 
Okay, so that's a lot of constant write cycles uh, on the storage device. So I'm thinking straight away, a magnetic hard disk drive. A normal magnetic hard disk drive is certainly fast enough to save the footage and it's fast enough to review the footage if you occasionally need to look back at your footage to see what's gone on in your shop. It's going to be very fast to do that, no issues. Hard disk drives offer a wide variety of storage capacities and they are affordable per unit, per gigabyte. Hard disk drives are robust enough for a CCTV system. They're not going to get bashed about, it's perfectly fine. Other factors that you may be thinking about when you've learned the pros and cons, you're thinking, okay, well, hard disk drives might require more power, but it doesn't matter in this situation. Hard disk drives might be a bit louder, doesn't matter in this situation. Um, SSDs might be a slightly uh, smaller form factor, it doesn't matter. A CCTV system is going to be in a cupboard on a shelf, sat on a desk. It being, you know, a little bit smaller isn't a deal breaker when you're buying a CCTV system, so it's not important. So in summary... Basically, the majority of the benefits of a solid-state drive are irrelevant when it comes to one of these CCTV systems that will be sat on a shelf or in your cupboard. So how do you answer the question? Again, the trick is to make sure that any benefits or negative things you're talking about, you relate them back to the scenario. You've got to explain it in the context of the CCTV story. So I would recommend a hard disk drive for the CCTV system because... The CCTV system has seven cameras, therefore that's a lot of storage capacity required to hold all of that footage. Hard disk drives are far cheaper per unit of storage compared to SSDs. In other words, this system requires a lot of storage for all that video footage. Hard disk drives are cheaper per unit for that storage and we need a lot of storage. CCTV systems are not portable and usually sit on a cupboard. This means the additional robustness of a SSD are not required and would be unnecessary expense. It's going to sit on a shelf. It's not going to be in your bag, carried on a train, walking around the house. It sits on a shelf. It sits on a cupboard. It doesn't matter um, if a solid state drive is more robust. This thing ain't moving, really. It's not. doesn't matter. It's not uh, applicable. CCTV systems are usually mains powered and do not rely on batteries. This means that any power saving efficiencies that you might have from using a solid state drive a likely not good enough reason for the extra expense of buying solid state drives over a HDD. In other words, it's not battery powered, so if I'm saving on power, it's plugged into the mains. There's no batteries involved, so is my bills a bit cheaper? Possibly. Does that outweigh the extra cost of these more expensive hard drives? Probably not. And finally, and importantly, CCTV systems are constantly recording and re-recording footage. They work by, you know, older footage gets replaced by the newer footage over time. That's a lot of uh, write cycles on the hard disk drive. A solid state drive has limited write cycles, therefore may get worn out faster than a traditional hard disk drive for this requirement. You just need to link it back. You can't just say limited write cycles on solid state. You would need to say... CCTV system is constantly using write cycles, it's constantly saving data, therefore a solid state drive um, is probably not appropriate for this situation. Okay, so you need to remember the pros and cons, understand how it works, but then finally, don't lose those marks, make sure you relate the answers you give to the scenario if there is one. If it's a short one marker, two markers and there's no scenario, that's fine. If there is a scenario, you're expected to relate your answers back to the scenario. Hope this helps.